log in here. Good morning, children. This morning, your dad and I woke up at 7 a.m. Do you realize what time it is there when it's 7 o'clock here? It's 4 o'clock in the morning. That means it's like three hours before I wake you up for school. So we're totally up early. But of course, we're trying to go to bed earlier, but that doesn't really happen. So we're both like, I'm tired. <laughs> but Princess Tart, I wanted to show you, I miss you so much. I am wearing your bracelet that you made for me. I love it. It's so pretty. Thank you so much. We will be home soon. Just getting through these next couple days without each other, but we'll make it. And Carly, you're doing a great job. I saw the, the pictures from the pumpkin fiasco, and it looked really exciting. <laughs> I love you guys. Shay! Go to hell! Do you love your kids or not? What was that? You didn't hear what I said. Do, I did hear what you said. Do you want to? Do you want to tell your kids what you said? Children, I love you. <laughs> Just getting ready for the last day of entree leadership. And we're we're chipper. Are you chipper? Go to hell. <laughs> You're such a booger. I'm chipper. Oh yeah. Play the saxophone. You're on the saxophone, Mama Tart. So we're about to watch the Dave Ramsey show live from Entree Leadership right here in Orlando, Florida. Uh, it's a special Finally, after all these years of me being able to say, well, Dave says, Dave says, I finally got Dave to say, well, Shay says. <laughs> so that's Absolutely not. I mean, I, I, when I tell my story, I tell about the umpteen jobs I had. I'm kind of like John Acuff, and uh, I was a real estate agent, I was a door-to-door -door pest control salesman, I was a school bus driver, radio DJ, and then I worked in granite for a number of years, and I started my own granite countertop business, basically just searching for what I wanted to do when I grew up, because I, I never caught hold of that, well, you know, you just go through school and you get a job that you hate so you can pay the bills. I wanted to enjoy life. I'm definitely somebody who's always kind of been like wild and crazy and I didn't want to hate, you know, growing up and being an adult and having to go somewhere every day that I just absolutely, you know, hate it. I think it was John on stage, he talked about uh, on Sunday nights, I would, you know, just like he said, I would physically feel sick on Sunday nights because I knew that Monday was coming and I had to go to work and I just didn't want that in my life. And I feel like there's a lot of people out there that listen to your show, because I was definitely one of them when I used to listen, that there's hope. You can do something you love. You don't have to be subject to the nine to five and be a slave to something that you hate. And a lot of people are discouraged because they think, well, I, I mean, I can't do that. I, I, can't, I can't think of anything I want to do. But there's hope. John Acuff is a perfect example. I definitely recommend his book, Quitter. I read it on the way here to the Entree Leadership conference and it's amazing so anybody out there who's thinking that you hate what you do and you want to find your dream I would definitely recommend getting his book Quitter because it is a funny practical resource that will help encourage you and give you some real guidelines to kind of transitioning into something that you love instead of like just waking up every morning and punching the clock because you got to have money to pay the bills. How do you go from granite countertop aficionado to YouTube 
<laughs> it's a slow process, just like you uh, you told us this weekend. It's the uh, Aesop's you know fable, the tortoise and the hare. You have an idea, you have a dream, and you start working towards it. That's one thing that I've realized as I've gotten older that. Things take time. You can't just, you know, have overnight success. You have to have a dream. This is my, this is my saying. I always say the secrets to life are hidden behind the word cliche. So you know, you get a dream, you start working towards it, little by little. You don't quit. You don't let anybody tell you you can't accomplish what you wanted. You know what your dream is. And over time, focused intensity multiplied by God over time, just like you talk about in your theorem. That is the secret, you know? The secret is that there's no secrets. Every time you hear something that sounds like, oh, that's just a cliche, that's when your ears should perk up. So I just knew that I didn't want what I had and I wanted something that I enjoyed and I didn't know what it was yet, but I was open to whatever could come down the pipe and the second I found YouTube and thought, I could do that, I could talk in funny voices and act like a radio DJ, I just, I pursued it. Whatever it is that you think that you might be good at, if you're listening right now, just start to pursue it little by little and don't quit until the day comes where you're standing on stage with Dave Ramsey. You're like, I did it! I'm so happy! So that's, I mean, that's it. You know, the secrets to life are in behind more So I was 27 years old, had two kids, and I figured, oh, I'm a middle-aged man now. I, I need to be responsible. We should have a computer in this family. And like I said yesterday, I had never taken any computer class my whole high school career. I went halfway through college. I dropped out one day because I couldn't find a parking spot. So I told my wife, I said, we need to get a computer. And I always say, I never will forget what she said when I brought that up to her. She said, what will we do with it? And uh, I said, maybe we can send each other emails. So we got this computer. I got on YouTube and just started watching these videos. And I started uploading a few videos. My very first video is uh, me dancing around in one of my wife's unitards. And uh, that has like 300,000 views now. <laughs> I do private performances on the side. Anyways, uh, <laughs> oh, no. that's not true. That's how I got out of debt, actually. No. Uh, <laughs> and then just built it up over the last four and a half years. You know, we got a couple subscribers. I got a shout out from a fellow YouTuber and just built it, built it, built it, and just. You know, once I found out I could make a little bit of money doing this thing, like I said, my first check was 300 bucks, I just went all in and I said, I'm going to make this happen, and it became my dream, and I'm here today. All in? I'm impressed. That's pretty cool. Thanks. Congratulations. Shake our all, ladies and gentlemen. All right, our week here in Orlando is all wrapped up. We had five days of intense business awesome. leadership training from one of the most successful men I know. Now we're headed down to the final banquet and we get to go on a safari well, to see some animals. Technically it's supposed to be a surprise. <laughs> oh, oh, Sorry, babe. I'm a baboon. I'm a crazy baboon. We know that. I could you call that. me a baboon? <laughs> you know it. You know what they you say about baboons? What do they say? I don't know. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> You're weird. I don't know this guy. I don't know who he's with. Oh, okay, we are entering the Harambe Forest Preserve. There's going to be wild animals and baboons. He's and, one of them. And I'm a baboon, and we are going through a creek right now. Oh, we're actually driving so through a river. Check it out, you guys. Hippopotamuses. Right, look, look. Hippo. It's much more efficient for them. They're walking on the bottom. Gliding through the river. That's awesome. Here's a hippo. Please do remain seated at all times while we are on safari. Dude, that's so. Uh -huh. They're walking on the bottom. They're not floating. They're actually so heavy that they walk on the bottom. And they can eat over 150 pounds of grass. That's a good way to stay out of the way of your predators. Just walk underneath the water. Those were hippopotamus. Hungry, hungry hippos. Crocodile. After a while, crocodile. Look at that. That is humongous. Will the beast. 
Though they look a bit like cows, white-bearded wildebeest are actually a large species of antelope. What's up, antelope, bro? Unfortunately, due to expansion into animal territory and poaching, we do believe these animals are now critically endangered and that there are now less than 500 of them left in the wild. It's because they use their horns for Harry Potter wands. <laughs> that was a good one. Oh, one those <laughs> <laughs> These are known as the chopper antelope. Hey, dude. Watch out, there's a lion behind you. Entering Asia. Never been to Asia before. This is my first visit. I tried to dig a hole there once when I was a kid. Any of you ever do that? It's the old, you can dig a hole to China thing. Me and Casey did that once when we were like nine. I think for a second that we really thought that we could dig a hole all the way to China. Look at this disgustingness. Oh, what are you trying to do, Florida? It's nasty. Look at the reflection. Nice reflection. Nice reflection. You like that reflection, bro? Hey, color pants, homie. You like that reflection? This is only color pants number three for the week. Yeah. I, I like your down. salmon color. Oh, man, that's gorgeous. <laughs> Double didgeridoo. On oh, percussion. The crescent moon high in the night sky watches over the tree of life with all of its fruit and all of its animals. That's pretty cool. It's a cool evening. You can see that very well. It's a crescent moon and this is the tree of life right here at Walt Disney World in Orlando. Kind of see in the tree there's like an owl right there. I think there's some other animals carved in the trunk of that tree. That is cool. Oh. And one last thing, the winner will have to wax <laughs> the other person's chest, no. or legs, Shay shaves or his back. Chest. That's no, not I'm fair. I'm, I'm due for a wax. Are you Harry? Yeah. You get to choose the body part <laughs> if you win. All right.